Good morning, everybody. You are so welcome uh, to Elevate this morning from wherever you are. Um, I'm so encouraged and excited and happy to be back here uh, this morning. And I just want to say a big thank you to the many people that sent texts and uh, phone calls to myself and George over the last month. We really appreciated it. Um, and I know there are a good few people at the moment who are quarantining or who have COVID. And we just want to say that we are with you, we're praying for you, and we hope that this morning that you're able to just worship God, come into his presence um, and praise him because he is good despite what is going on um, where you are. So we just encourage you to stretch out your arms and just wherever you are right now, just come into the presence of God and worship his name. We were waiting without hope and without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the
as we sing these lyrics, Lord, Father, God, God, we know that we are held by you. God, we know that you walk beside us, Father, in the things um, and the circumstances we find ourselves in, Lord, Father, when we feel all alone, God. But the reality, God, is that your truth doesn't say that, Lord, Father. Your truth doesn't say that we're on our own. Your truth, Lord, Father, says that you're omnipresent, Lord, Father, and that you're with each and every single one of us in our homes right now, Lord, Father. God, as we sing these words, Lord Father, God, I pray that you would humble our hearts, Lord Father, that the words that we sing, that we would mean, Lord God, that we would trust you, Lord Father, God, that we would step out of um, the fear that we are bound by, Lord Father, God, that we would step into your peace, Lord Father.
my soul rests in your embrace, for I am yours, and you are mine. Oh, oh, oh. And I will call. Thank you for being here with us this morning and to, to just thank you for worshiping with us. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to just enter into a time of communion where what we want you to do while you're at home this morning is we want you to just take a few moments just to, to reflect on yours and your relationship with Jesus. And you know, just as we're singing those words, trust and obey, sometimes they just feel like the hardest thing in the world to do because we don't know what the end game is and so sometimes in our each of our own relationships with Jesus we're we're looking to him and part of us feels like we want to trust part of us feels like we want to obey and we just don't know how or we don't know if we're willing to risk it but last night when we were having our prayer meeting, we, we read this passage, it's Psalm 23, and we've all, we've all heard it. But, but for me, it had become the kind of passage that you read, but that you kind of just read over. And it starts with this, it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down, he makes me rest. He makes me take it easy in green pastures. And he leads me beside quiet waters, and he refreshes my soul. And so as you're worshiping this morning, as you're at home, as you're, as you're trying to figure out what, what life is supposed to look like as a Christian right now, 
I want you to see that. I want you to see that his intention for you when you don't feel like you can keep going, when you're just oh so weary, is to lie down in green pastures. And you jump on to, I think it's John 16, 33, and it says this. It says, I have told you these things so that you may have peace. And he says, I've told you these things that in this world that you will have trouble, but take heart because I have overcome the world. So when you don't know, when you're not sure, when you're not even sure if you want to trust and obey, take heart because whatever it is that you feel is holding you back, Christ has overcome the world. And you know, the gospel says that he did it for you and that he did it for me so that we may have peace in him. God, we thank you so much that you sent your one and only son. We thank you so much that you loved us to overcome the world. And God, we just pray that right now when we don't know what's going on, when we're not sure what tomorrow's going to look like, when we're not sure when we're going to be together as a body in Christ, when we're going to meet together and worship and praise you together, we thank you that you have overcome it all. That you have a day in mind when this is going to be over. And God, I thank you that you are faithful to bring us through to then. Thank you for my son. Thank you for covering the cost of my sins and my shortcomings, God. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for, for joining us 
uh, wherever you're at right now, or, or even if you're watching this in the afternoon and you're not joining us live, uh, it's really glad, glad to, uh, to have just so many of you with us. Um, my name is Justin, and uh, this morning we are starting a brand new series that we have titled Rethink Church. And uh, as I was uh, preparing for this week, um, for this this week, I, I kind of realized that we could have probably just named this series Rethink Life, <laughs> because uh, we've pretty much had to rethink just about everything of these days. And in truth, this has offered us a really great opportunity to rethink church, because you know what, right now, um, it's almost impossible to think that the church is just four walls, to think that the church is a building because we can't even meet in a building, <laughs> and, and we can't meet in those four walls, and so it's causing us to really, you know, rethink what is the church, what, what really matters when it comes to church, and the church wouldn't even be able to exist right now if it, it was in a building, but, but for some reason in the middle of all this, the church is still going strong, and, and the reason why it is is because it's never been about an institution or a building or just upholding traditions, but, but the church is really about people, a group of people moving together in the same direction towards something that's new, something that's good. And the truth is, is that the, 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 the circumstances that, that we're experiencing in this pandemic, it, it actually offers us a great opportunity to rethink church, to rethink a lot of things. <laughs> But my bet is that in the middle of this, at, at some point or another, maybe even this morning, uh, maybe, maybe yesterday, but you said some version of this statement. I, I know because I've said the same thing. I can't wait to get back to the way things were. <laughs> if you have said that, give me like a thumbs up, maybe a little heart emoji, something. You know, I'm not alone. Uh, I, I think all of us, we have this feeling right now. I mean, we're trying to push forward in this, but, but sometimes it's just like, man, I just can't wait until things get back to the way that they were. And, and isn't it funny that, I mean, when we think back, we almost idealize it. We forget that we had any problems before all of this, right? It's this like perfect picture and we're moving back towards this perfect picture. It wasn't perfect. I mean, we had problems before all of this, but, but we move back. And the funny thing is, is that when it comes to, to difficult circumstances in our lives, oftentimes we have this, this push in us, this tension that, that pulls us, rather than moving forward towards something new and toward something different, we end up sometimes looking back and pushing towards something old and something familiar. And as I was preparing for this, I came across this message, and there was this phrase that really stood out to me. And I think it really is helpful in helping us maybe not fall prey to this, this danger that I see of us all focusing backwards. And this is the phrase. Pain with no gain is an extraordinary shame. I mean, wouldn't it be terrible if we went through all the things that we're struggling through right now and we didn't gain or experience anything good from all this? If we weren't able to push through this and move towards something, it would be an absolute shame. And this statement is true in, in so many things that we struggle with in our life. Man, pain without gain is an absolute shame. I mean, sometimes we're led to believe that, you know, pain and, and gain just come with each other. But the truth of the matter is, is they don't. There's times where things just hurt and, and we don't get anything out of it. And when that happens, it is an extraordinary shame. And, and that almost always happens whenever we're struggling. If instead of pushing forward and moving through it towards something new and something better, if we fall prey to this tension or, or this pull backwards towards what's old and what's familiar. And in fact, this struggle, man, this, is, this struggle has destroyed so many individuals. And I mean, there's a lot of churches that have fallen prey to this, right? They, instead of moving towards what's new, when, when they face change, they just head backwards towards what's old, what's familiar. It's a struggle all of us understand. And, and it's a struggle that's been around for a long time. And Jesus understood this very well. And there's a passage that, that I want us to look at this morning where Jesus shares some things that are going to help us see how we can push towards something new rather than heading backwards. How we can experience gain from the pain that we're in right now rather than it amounting to nothing and being a total shame. So if you have your Bibles, we're going to look in Luke 
chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, and we're going to start at verse 31. And if you don't have your Bibles, they'll, they'll pop up on, on the screen for you. But I'll just tell you first kind of what leads into this story. And actually what leads into this story is, is a really good picture of the church. <laughs> because what's happening as we get into this story is that there's all these people that are spending time with Jesus, and they're coming from all sorts of different backgrounds. Some of them have okay reputations. Some of them, um, not so great reputations. I mean, they're coming from different jobs, different places. And all these people, though, what they have in common is that that they are coming together and they're spending time with Jesus. They're they're starting to move towards Jesus. Now, what happens when when this is occurring and all these people are spending time with Jesus is is some of the religious people, some of the people that were very drawn towards something old and something familiar, they come to Jesus and they're like, Jesus, why are you hanging out with all these people? They use stronger words than that, but I'm just going with people. Right, you, you all get that. I've been watching um, The Crown at home. I almost picture like this posh, like people, like people. Why are you hanging out with these people? people. And and this is what Jesus says to him. In verse 31, he says this, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. It is not the healthy that need a doctor, but the sick. One of the things I love about Jesus is he says stuff that's just like straight, like, man, that's a simple truth. We can all grab our hands around that, but, but man, some reason, sometimes these simple things, they're so profound. I mean, isn't it true that unless you realize you're sick, you don't go to the doctor, right? None of us. You, unless you realize you're sick, you don't go to the doctor. And, and right now, we're living in a time, right, where we realize the danger of that. I mean, if someone is sick and they don't realize they're sick, I mean, what could happen? They could walk around. They could, they could infect a bunch of other people with their sickness I mean, that would be a terrible thing. And the truth of the matter is, is that this is also true in our life. When we have sickness, when there's things inside of us that we don't see are broken or wrong, what does it do? Man, it it spreads over into other people in our lives. And sometimes we struggle to actually realize where maybe there's some things in us that are broken. All right? The truth of the matter is, some of you guys, maybe, maybe you can, I think guys are really bad at this, a lot of people, but I don't go to the doctor unless I'm dying. Like, really, I mean, I, I am so slow sometimes to recognize whenever I need help, <laughs> to admit, to admit, where maybe, just maybe, I'm moving in the wrong direction. See, the truth of the matter is, in the middle of this pandemic, and we're all We're all experiencing things. But some of the problems we're experiencing, they're not new problems. They're just made worse in the middle of all this. If you're struggling with finances, man, pretty good chance that it's a little bit worse right now. If you were struggling before this in your marriage, you're probably about to kill each other right now. If you're at home and you were struggling with your kids before this, right about now, man, those problems, they're coming to the surface. And we're offered this incredible opportunity in the middle of this to look at maybe some areas of our life where we might need some help. See, the first step to, to instead of going backwards to something old and familiar, but, but forwards towards something new, the first step is to admit where you're moving in the wrong direction. And, and really, the people that were surrounding Jesus, the church of Jesus, what it looked like was a bunch of people that were admitting and realizing that they needed some help. And they were, because of that, they were spending time with Jesus. And this is what Jesus says immediately following that verse in 31. He says this. It's not the healthy eating the doctor, but the sick. And then he says, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Sometimes we get lots in these uh, biblical words because we're not used to using them. Sinners, repentance. But really, this is a basic thing that all of us do really understand, Right? It's not enough to just admit that you're sick. You got to realize that you need help, and you got to then start moving in the right direction. And what this repentance is saying is that, man, when you realize something's off, it's not enough to just realize it. You got to admit it, but then you got to turn, and that's what repentance is, and you got to start moving in a different direction. 
And there's all these people around Jesus that are taking the first steps in doing that. They're, they're starting to move in the right direction. But yet there are other people that don't even realize they're sick. Right? There's people in the middle of this. And as I thought about this, something popped into my mind that, that I think is helpful right now. In the middle of it, help me see maybe where sometimes I get off in this, okay? How many of you, in the middle of this, whenever they made the last announcement uh, here in Ireland that, that, that we were going to be in lockdown just a little bit longer, right? We had a finish line. We had a place we were headed. We were going in this direction. But when we got to that finish line, right, we thought we were there. All of a sudden, the finish line moves. You're just like, why? <laughs> all right? When, when you are running towards the finish line and that finish line moves, man, it's a shame. Why? Because when you are running in a direction, man, it takes effort. There's pain involved. There's suffering involved. And when you get to the finish line, if that finish line isn't the finish line, man, that's a shame. Because why? Because you haven't gained anything. Now, imagine, this would almost be comical, but imagine someone running a race and they're running the entire time in the wrong direction. And they get to the finish line and they're like, woohoo, I did it. Only to realize that it was the wrong finish line. We would laugh, right? Or cry. Because it's actually pretty sad. But I think there's so many of us, if we're not careful, if we start pointing back towards the old, or if we don't realize the things that we can change, we start running towards the wrong finish line. Pain without gain would be an extraordinary shame. So Jesus is, is sharing this with these people. And, and there are some people that are getting it. And they're, they're starting to move in the right direction. But, but there's also a lot that just aren't. And um, sometimes I am in that boat too, where I just don't get it, right? In Jesus, he shares this story. It's a parable. And Jesus often does this. He tells these stories about things that we totally understand to help us whenever maybe we're struggling a little bit. And this is the parable that Jesus shares. Listen to this. It says, No one tears a piece out of a new garment to patch an old one. Otherwise, they will have torn the new garment. And the patch from the old, or from the new, will not match the patch of the old. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins, and the wine will run out, and the wineskins will be ruined. No, new wine must be poured into new wineskins. And no one, after drinking old wine, wants the new, for they say, the old is better. <laughs> that last statement, the old is better. I mean, we all have this strong pull towards the old. I actually love it that Jesus is using wine illustrations too, right? He's talking to the people. But, but the truth of the matter is, is that for us, we may not get these right away. The people in Jesus' audiences, they did. This was all like everyday common knowledge for them. I mean, chances are a lot of you, when your garments need patching, you just throw them away, right? We, a lot of us, we don't patch stuff up anymore. But what Jesus is saying, right, is if you take a new piece of cloth and you put it on an old garment, when you wash that, the new piece is going to shrink, and what's going to happen? It's going to pull away. That the old and the new, man, they just don't go together. And wouldn't it be an extraordinary shame to invest all this energy into patching a garment only to have no gain out of it? Or, or this, the wine, right? Uh, not many of you probably make wine. I think maybe one person in, uh, that I know, one person I know makes wine. You, you, but here's the thing with wine, right? Um, when you make wine, it ferments. And as it ferments, it releases a gas and it expands. And so it's very important that you put wine into a new wine skin because a new wine skin has the ability to flex whenever the pressure builds. But I think this is, is so pertinent to us right now because if you put new wine in an old wine skin, what it's going to do is when that pressure builds, it's going to push against the weak spots and it's going gonna, it's gonna to expose the cracks. It's going to burst. And, and I think for a lot of us right now, this pandemic is applying pressure in our lives, potentially in some of the weak areas, right? The weak spots. And, and, and if we're not careful, if, if we stay doing things the way we've always done them, as that pressure builds, what can it do? It can cause things to just burst and break. But wouldn't it be an incredible shame to go through all this pain 
and they're not gaining anything from it. See, what Jesus wants is for us to move in the right direction, to experience something new. But we all have this pull backwards towards what's old and what's familiar. And this isn't a new problem that we have. I mean, we experience this in so many areas of our life. I mean, even this year, some of you probably set out with, with new goals to, to push towards, you know, being more healthy. And I've done this in the past too, but all of a sudden those old snacks start to really build up on you. And you're like, man, I want to eat healthy, but mm, I really want to push in this direction. And, and old bad habits can, can bring us backwards rather than us moving forward towards something new and something different. Or, or I am, I'm, I'm sometimes bad for this. I hate when the pressure builds. I hate the pain that I experience in my life when cracks are being exposed. Sometimes I will do absolutely anything to ignore them. I'll just try and keep myself busy. And right now, right, I, I can't always do that the way that I used to, right? So, I mean, some of you right now, I mean, you're just diving into Netflix. You're watching it absolutely nonstop because it's, easy, it's easier than dealing with some of the things that, that you're struggling with right now. Or maybe it's games, or, or maybe it's food, or whatever it is. And it's not that these things are bad in and of themselves, but I mean, when we dive into these things to distract us from where God wants us to be and where he's leading us, man, it's an, it's an extraordinary shame. And I know that for me, there, there's times as, as, as I'm trying to move towards what's new and what's better, there are times when I just feel like, man, I just don't have it in me. And I would imagine that you've experienced that too. I mean, if you're sitting at home and you've been there, you're like, I just don't got any more love. I just, I just got, there's no more gas in the tank. I was, I was talking with Dermot about this uh, this week, and um, he reminded me of this guy. There's this guy, David Goggin, and uh, he's like a, a man beast, right? He's won all these crazy races, like Ironmans and all this kind of stuff. Uh, did, he's a Navy SEAL. I mean, he, he's accomplished things physically that, you know, you'd be like, how? How could this happen? He's broken world records. But he has this rule. And, and this is what he says. He says, um, you, when your mind is telling you you're done, you're really only 40% done. <laughs> when your mind is telling you you're done, you're really only 40% done. And I heard that and I was like, man, there's so many times where I say I'm done. I'm not done. I got more in me. There's 60% left. There's so much more. But sometimes we sabotage ourselves and sabotage what God wants to push us towards because we believe the lie that we're done and we don't have any more in us, and it's not true. Wouldn't it be an extraordinary shame if we went through all this and we didn't move towards something good and something better? And that's what Jesus wants for us. And, and he doesn't want us to do that alone. He doesn't want us to be sitting at home and, and feeling this struggle and feeling like you give up and, and to not lean into other people for help. He doesn't ask for that. No, that's what the church is actually all about. It's a big group of people. They don't have it all figured out, but what they're doing is they're taking steps in the right direction. They're moving away from something old and they're moving towards something better. And in order to do that, you got to admit where you're moving in the wrong direction you got to choose a different direction, and then you got to start moving in that direction. you just got to start. You know, I'm amazed by God's patience and all this, and the fact that the church still today looks the same, right? It's this big group of people. They don't have it all figured out, but one thing they have in common, they're just taking steps. They're drawing closer to good. They're drawing closer to God. In James 4, it says this. It says, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. What an incredible promise. What an incredible gift. That as we start moving in the right direction, we know that God, man, he's going to make up the gap. He's going to come. He's going to find us where we're at. So my prayer for you is that in the middle of this, and this tension that sometimes pushes you backwards, that you would find courage to move towards what is new, what is good. That in the middle of this, maybe, maybe drawing near to God is something you've never even done before. Maybe for the very first time, you're starting to wonder if, if maybe, maybe politicians, maybe all the things that you thought had answers, maybe God has answers that only God has answers for. And if that's you, man, start pushing towards that. And it's okay just to take one step at a time. Because as we draw near to God, he draws near to us. Would you pray with me? God, thank you so much. 
that, that you have, have, have charted a course for us um, that, that we wouldn't necessarily see if it weren't for you, that we see a new way and a new path, and you are constantly in our lives pushing us towards that, even when everything within us is drawing us away. God, thank you that the church is, is made up of people that are encouraging each other towards something new, to, to look beyond our fears and to focus on Jesus, the pioneer, the perfecter of our faith. God, we love you and we thank you. Uh, God, just thank you that, that we have this opportunity to rethink church and that your church would be stronger than ever in the middle of all this. Why? Because we're just following you and that's what church is at its core. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
over ourselves, Lord Father, that your peace, Lord Father, God, would wash over us, Jesus. God, Father, as we step out, Lord Father, this week, um, and we choose to trust in you, Lord Father, God, we choose to have you be the one that directs our paths, Lord Father, not ourselves. We have no idea when the world will get back to whatever normal is, Lord Father, and God, maybe it never will, but God, we know who you are, Lord Father, we know that you are not changing, Lord Father, that you are staying the same, Lord Father, and there is so much peace in that, Lord Father, knowing that we are held in your hands, Lord God, no matter what comes. So God, I just pray for your peace this week, Lord Father, over each family, over each household, Lord Father, God, may, may you reign, Lord Father, in the homes in this city, Lord Father, may your peace just be upon us, Jesus. We thank you, we praise you for who you are, God, for you are good. You are holy, you are mighty, God, and we thank you for that, Jesus. Amen. Guys, just before you go, um, I just want to encourage you, if you haven't yet signed up for a small group, please do. I know there have been a few people on to me this week that have said, I just don't want to do one more Zoom. I just can't look at the screen anymore. Um, but I just want to encourage you, we have no idea how long we're going to be apart for. Um, and meeting and hearing and praying with other people just for 40 minutes, just one 40 minute Zoom a week, it, it might just be that one thing that helps you keep going for another couple of days. So I just really encourage you and those of you who are on the fence right now to really strongly consider uh, joining in a group. And maybe just go once and see how it goes. Um, but just take that, st that step this week. Uh, we're praying for you. Um, we, yeah, what can I say? We're praying for you in bucket loads. Um, you're always in our thoughts and prayers. So just pray that um, you know who God is this week. And we'll see you soon. See you next week. Thanks, guys. <laughs>